months since my last video and a lot has happened in the four months so let's start at the beginning so in December 2017 I made a video with the title God answered and in that video I spoke about how I was just so tired of making plans and doing things and always having a new plan for our infertility journey and how I was basically just going to give it over to God and trust him that he will bless us with a child well the last four months have been incredibly, incredibly difficult. I can't even begin to explain to you how tough it was. Each and every month when I wasn't pregnant, it was terrible. And each month was worse than the previous month. So I started questioning this whole thing. Um, not really the decision that I made to trust God, but more like I didn't understand why isn't it working I I'm doing everything right my goodness I started meditating just you know taking time for myself I prayed I did Bible study I I slept enough I um, we spent time together we just really really tried to relax ironic and it just wasn't working at all and I just came to a point where I, I just can't sit around and do nothing. Now, often we hear that we shouldn't, you know, go into works and try and do everything ourselves. And I thought that I had to be careful, um, you know, not to do that. So, one of the reasons why I decided not to do anything is just to give complete control over to God. And I thought that that would be uh, liberating. So at one stage, one month, when I was once again wrapping presents for baby showers and writing congratulation cards for um, people who are now pregnant and things, I just went to our nursery, we call it the baby's room, the Baba Kamer, and just to get some wrapping paper for one of the presents. And as I opened the cupboard, I saw some of our baby clothes that I've been collecting for the past couple of years and I just felt so abandoned and so alone and it was just for me it was just a symbol of disappointment and frustration and not getting anywhere and I felt so sorry for myself in the sense that uh, you know when I bought those clothes I thought for sure it's going to happen soon so I pulled the clothes from the cupboard and I really freaked out. I wanted to cut them all up. Um, I didn't, luckily, but it was very close. Because I was just over it and I couldn't understand. I've made this major decision to just trust God and not have a plan and to just relax and go on with my life. And I couldn't understand why it wasn't working. So as I was looking at the baby clothes and throwing them all over the floor, I really started to question God um, like I've never questioned him before and just I asked him, why? Why am I going through this? Why are you putting us through this? Um, Francia had cancer and he's now healthy again and everything is fine. Where's our happy ending? It's three years later. Um, why aren't we getting the things that we are praying for and trusting him for? So two things. The first is that during this time what I actually started to pray for more than wanting a baby, my number one request was, God please make it so that this is not so important to me. Like I wanted it to be less important more than I wanted an actual child, if that makes sense. Because it was, it's just, it can consume you. And um, especially if it's something that you've dreamed about for so long and it symbolizes so many things, in our case, our happy ending that we can go on with our life. The second thing is I just really wanted a voice to come from heaven. I don't know if I wanted that to happen literally, but it would have been so great if there was just this voice that said, Jackie, Francia, don't worry, or 
um, do the following or just continue don't stress or whatever you know just a personalized message for us so as I was sitting in the nursery and I looked at all of these baby clothes and I cried and cried and cried and asked God to just give me an answer I was like Okay, so how does God speak to us? He speaks through His Word. So I'm just going to open the Bible at a random place and let's just see what He says. And there wasn't anything. It was some kind of useless part of the history somewhere um, which wasn't applicable. I tried to look for something that was applicable, but it wasn't. So I was like, great, okay, thanks a lot. Um, I asked you for answers and you just didn't show up. And literally I went into a stage of just autopilot where every day I just got up, I did what I had to, I um, did everything that I had to do for the day and then I would save my emotions for the end of the day, got home, I would cry, I would be frustrated, I would just get in bed and sleep and then wake up again and by the time Francia gets home I've put on my makeup again and I took dinner and we continue and it went on like that for weeks and weeks. So as you know I am also seeing a psychologist to help me with all of the things that I have to juggle and it's really really so helpful. I haven't seen him this year and I my first appointment was about four weeks ago for the first time in the year in this year. We just started working through some things and once again just how everything gets together. One of the things I discovered among many others is that Franch and I kind of sees the cancer as a very rude interruption to our life. So something that happened, kind of an advertisement break and now, so that was the pause button and now it's play again and now we can just pick up where we left off. Um, with our life and our plans and our plans to have a family and that was something that I think we did to protect ourselves just because dealing with the consequences of cancer isn't fun because you are happy that it's over and you want to go on with your life and forget that that ever happened but that isn't the case you can't be the same you will never be the same and the reality is it does have an impact on uh, many many things so once I started accepting that, it, it, it got better. But also, I really didn't know why I'm feeling this way. Why can't I just relax? And one of the things that I discovered in therapy is that this is my personality. I am a doer. I want to do things. So yes, it can have a hint of obsession or be there for different reasons. Maybe because I've been in so many situations where I felt powerless and had absolutely no control and the infertility just brought up a lot of those emotions again. So having control and having a plan had that element. But now that I know that, so in the previous video where I said God answered and that I had to just do nothing, that's why I haven't made a video in so many months because I wanted to try it first and just see how it went and when it went terribly I didn't know how to explain it. Why? But now I'm starting to understand. So firstly I had to have a period of time now where I just did nothing about our infertility situation and by that I mean to not make any plans and schedule and um, you know just obsess over every little thing because what it showed me is I'm not the type of person who can just sit around and do nothing. And that's okay. That's the way I am. That's the way God made me. That's my personality. I am adventurous and I want to have a structure to things. But now that I know the dangers of obsessing about things and doing things for the wrong reason, I know that I can do exactly the same thing but just take that element out of it. So in therapy uh, we discussed it and really the best thing for me is to have a list of things to do in terms of going for, for another treatment, the order of the sequence of treatments, um, just to have a plan in place. And it's not because I now want to take control over the situation, which I think previously I can't really say that that was completely the case, but 
it definitely had an element of fear to be powerless does that make sense so do not feel that everything is just consuming you but that you're doing something and that you're not just a powerless victim of your circumstances but now that I know that and now that I discovered that I know that it's not a bad thing to have plans and God can use any plan that you have so as you might know well most of you are probably South African or friends and family who watch our videos but we had a prayer meeting the it's time event by Angus Bachan and it was absolutely indescribable it was wonderful but one of the things that started happening is I just started to see my life a little bit more in in perspective in the sense that it's so much bigger than just our own desires it's it goes so much further than just the things that we want here on earth not that it's not important but it shouldn't be the most important thing I think for a long time having children was the most important thing in my life so when we were at the it's time event it was so wonderful and I just started to see God's plan for his people and just what he's doing in Cape Town and in Mitchell's plain and among South Africans and just how he wants to heal people and be our number one so for me it was also a symbol I wanted to go to the event in my own way to show God or you know as an act of obedience to show him that I am dependent upon him I can do nothing without him and none of us can so we had such a wonderful experience and then the next day at church uh, we are now on a journey in our church to just the theme is kind of how to hear God's voice or how to hear God speak and I thought that was very interesting because I've been going through this struggle you know in my personal life where I just want to know what God is thinking and what he wants and what he wants to tell me and um, I just really wanted to have an experience with him and to hear his voice. So God can use many different methods to talk to us and to communicate with us. And one of the things we are doing in church is to trust him to um, give us pictures, give us images, um, use different things to communicate um, in terms of conveying his messages to his people so as the service ended or there was one stage where we prayed for each other a good friend of ours um, prayed for us and he just said you know his prayer is that we will have for whatever it is that we are trusting God for that we will have new hope but that the hope will not be because we decided to have new hope or that it comes from within ourselves that we would have new hope because we can see God leading us and experience Him. So because of who He is, because of our experience with Him, and because of our encounter with Him, we will then have new hope as a consequence of that. So I just thought that was amazing. And this person knows a little bit about our story. Um, but we spoke about it afterwards and the prayer wasn't really about children um, it was just whatever we trusted God for and at that stage as I was closing my eyes and listening to him pray for us my prayer or what I trusted God for is that he would restore the balance in my life that he would make the things that are most important the most important things and that I would be part of his kingdom and have a kingdom perspective in the sense that there's a bigger picture there's a bigger plan so that was what I was trusting God for at that moment then the service ended and as we were walking out a person came to us and um, I've never seen him before in our church and we don't know each other but he greeted us very friendly and said hello hello and we said oh hi and he said you know what I'm so, I'm so sorry but I really have to tell you something he said that from the moment he saw us coming into the ch church that morning he experienced very very clearly that he should come and tell us that God says prepare the nursery and of course I started crying immediately because I was like what 
And he said he just experienced that God told him that we should prepare the nursery. In Afrikaans, kry die baba kamer He said, I, I don't know your situation, I don't know you, I don't know if you want children or not, but I feel like God is saying, prepare the nursery. And I was crying and I was saying, yes, we want children so badly. Um, you don't even know, you don't even understand. And he said he experienced that God is saying we are like Abram and Sarah and that we should call him Isaac. I've been reliving that moment for the past four days, every day, because it's just so wonderful. It's just so wonderful. I, I can't even explain it. I feel so grateful and so thankful and it felt so personal. It was such a direct message and such a personal message and something that I've been praying for for so long because I trust God and I've relied on His Word and I've heard so many testimonies. But I just felt like I wanted Him to tell me something, tell us something that's personal, that's specifically for us. So after church, Franche and I, we just walked out, we sat in the car, we cried all the way home. Actually, we didn't go home, <laughs> we had to go to the shops and we're like, we are on such a high, how can we just go do mundane things like shopping now? <laughs> But in an act of obedience, we came home that same day. This was Sunday the 25th of March 2018, four days ago. And we just reorganized the nursery, the baby's room, the Baba Kamer. We just sorted out everything. I took the baby clothes from where I stuffed it in the back of the cupboard. I, I sorted it out and I organized everything. and. Every now and again I said, can't we just keep this in here because it's like an extra room in the house and Franz is like, no, this is not a storage facility, this is a baby's room and I was like, okay, <laughs> suits me and it felt so good. We started talking about the decor of the room and everything and so we just thought that was an act of obedience like god said prepare the baby's room and we did it immediately because emotionally spiritually it just felt like that is what we had to do and that we trust god in this regard i find it so ironic that for the first two or three days in a long time where i've really started to forget about this whole baby thing and just focused on god bam here yeah, from the sidelines we get this direct message about having a child and we just said if we ever have a son we will be obedient and we will call him Isaac or in Afrikaans Isaac and the funny thing is like for years and years and years French and I have dreamed about having a baby so we have these lists of baby names on my phone on his phone some of it was on his old phone and we had to copy it and Every now and again when we hear something or we hear about a, a cool name, we add it to the list. And, or sometimes we sit outside, we drink coffee and I would say, okay, so let's talk about girls' names. And we have a little list and we have certain things that are criteria. Like it has to be two syllables, it has to be, we love um, Bible names, it has to be a strong name, it has to be, uh, you have to be able to spell it easily and pronounce it easily and all of these things. And when we walked out of the church on Sunday, we were like, Isaac, it's Isaac, that is perfect. Why didn't we think about this? And previously, when I thought about the whole story about Abram and Sarah, I kind of thought it's a little bit cliche. So people, you know, a, a couple who had to wait very long for the child and, and now it just has a complete different meaning because now it's like God is drawing the parallel and, and he's saying like them who had to really wait a long time, uh, this is also your case and your situation and it's his will that his name should be Isaac. And we just said, you know what? Yes. And it's funny, Francia always says that if he hears these stories about people who said, you know, God told us that our daughter's name should be this and this. 
he always said he, he really hopes that doesn't happen to us because what if God gives a name that we really don't like <laughs> and God just gave us the perfect perfect name the video would be way too long if I told you about all the other things that I've really discovered in therapy and things that are really starting to make sense in a major way for now I just want to focus on what has happened now so usually I would kind of keep experiences like that secret in a way um, I'm referring to what happened on Sunday because I'm just so scared that it doesn't happen I've had um, situations and encounters before where people have said they they are experiencing different things and where we believed it and it didn't come true well not not in so much detail it was always just kind of a generic message or things that people uh, felt for us and this time it was different this time it was especially for us and using a person who doesn't know us at all who doesn't know our story um, with such a direct concise message it was just different to all of the experiences before so initially you know you have this fleeting thought that well what if it doesn't come true and then people would think well it probably it obviously wasn't genuine the person didn't hear right or we were just desperate so whatever we hear we just eat it up as being the truth but you know what that's not my job my job is not to decide if that person heard correctly or not my job is to pray to God to trust him and then when the answers come to believe them because that's what I prayed for so it doesn't make sense to go mm, yes God I want you to give me a clear message but this clear message is probably not it so whatever happens if we have a daughter if we don't get pregnant now if it takes years and years which I don't which I hope it doesn't happen but for now this is my job my job is to trust God and I'm doing it and Francho is doing it and it's so wonderful for me to see how he's just taking the lead in this thing he just said yes this is this can't be coincidence and um, not being skeptical at all we were just so open and we said thank you thank you God for answering again going through infertility and going through cancer and sometimes going through the two of them at the same time is not fun but Staying true to our channel's message, being looking for the upside, you have to get to a point where you get meaning from all of the things that happen. And I'm in that process now. I'm starting to put things together and I've discovered so many things the last year. It's insane. I hope that through this video and through our story that you will continue following our story not because I want you to just watch our videos to get views or anything like that. My ultimate goal is to be real and to share whatever's going on so that you can relate or feel less alone or that it really also builds your faith because all of this is building my faith. It's also a way for me to get my feelings out, almost like a video diary, a public diary, but it helps me too because I look back on some of the videos that I've made and some of the things that I've said and experienced in that time and it helps me today it's it's so weird and wonderful and what I've also discovered is the thing about a breakthrough is it helps you to break through whatever is in your way at that moment and a breakthrough is powerful it's needed it's relevant and it, it really works for as long as it needs to and whatever the next thing is you'll get your breakthrough for that too so your breakthrough might last you a couple of months a couple of days one cycle two years you know and with breakthrough I mean that you get the answer you know that you or, or you know what you have to do or how you are going to approach a problem and then 
when things change or when circumstances change, God goes right along with you. He doesn't just give you this breakthrough and then moves on to other people to go and help them. He's there to give you a different breakthrough and one that's relevant for the circumstances that you are in. So I needed the breakthrough of doing nothing, just relaxing and saying, God, I can't do this anymore. I can't just go down this list and nothing happens. I I'm just so tired. And it was like God was saying, right, I need you now to do nothing so that you can get to the reason why you were doing the things that you were doing. Because taking them out of the equation, I could really focus on on the steps and the things and the motivation behind having all the plans. So, regardless of what happens, I know that God is faithful and that He listens to us and that He answers us. He answers me every time. And every time I need an answer, I get frustrated and I kind of forget how many times He's done it in the past. And the biggest, biggest thing that I've learned and that I need more and more of is just patience. Sometimes in the waiting, so many things happen because God is working and moving, even though for us it seems like everything is just standing still and you feel like you can go mad. I'm so grateful for having this experience and this message from God and I, I just feel so special and so loved and I just had to share it with you. I hope you have a lovely day and I hope that you continue to look for the upside no matter where you are. Bye!